Hey guys, Michael Rashawn back with you again. Happy Friday. Of course, I am your Ziegler licensed coach and we are here today to continue the topic of do my thoughts have meaning? And today I want to take that a step further. And so the question I want to pose is, do you believe? Now, I'm not talking strictly in a spiritual sense. That can absolutely be if you believe in a higher power, you believe in God, then that's great. That can be the belief. But I'm talking more of an intrinsic belief. Like, do you believe you can achieve something? Do you believe you can make permanent change? Do you believe you can kick that bad habit that you've had for 20 years? Whatever it is for you, you are capable of changing it. And it is capable of becoming permanent change. But what they have found through extensive research and cataloging is that if you want to make change permanent, then you have to have a component of belief. And this is very interesting because belief cuts both ways. So it can work very much in your favor and allow you to excel to your greatest heights, or belief can be the thing that keeps you stuck and holds you back. So the saying that I love by Henry Ford was, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. So do you believe you can accomplish great things? Do you believe you can make a million dollars? Do you believe you can run a marathon? Do you believe you can be a great husband and father? Or do you believe that you're just destined to live in poverty? Do you believe that you're destined to have a mediocre job? Do you believe that you can't excel physically? Whatever it is for you, that's your reality and your belief is going to inhibit or allow you to excel. And the story that I like that perfectly illustrates this is just how much belief inhibits our actual physical bodies and our physical self, just the connection between the mind and the body there. Now, prior to 1954, nobody in the world had been documented as having run a sub four minute mile. So people would get close to that four minute mile, but they could never break through that barrier. So until 1954, it was thought that it was physically impossible to run a four minute mile. They just believed, the scientific community, everybody else believed that the human body was not capable of moving at a speed that would break the four minute mile. That all changed in 1954. In 1954, a medical student ran a three minute 59.6 mile. This was over in England. And up to that point, nobody had ever had a documented sub four minute mile. That was the first one in history. And running is not a new sport. It's been around quite literally since the beginning of time. And for it to go that long without anybody breaking that four minute mile is incredible. But what's even more incredible is that 47 days after that record was broken, 47 days later, an Australian man ran an even faster sub four minute mile. He ran in three minutes, 57.9 seconds. So almost a full three seconds faster than the medical student had done. And since then, there's been over 1300 racers 1,300 runners that have documented sub four minute miles. The fastest one to date was done in actually 1999 and it was run in three minutes, 43 seconds, a full 17 seconds faster than the first sub four minute mile that was ever done. There wasn't a dramatic increase in human evolution. There wasn't a huge breakthrough in technology. All that changed was the belief because once somebody broke through that barrier, then everybody else's beliefs were shattered and they realized that it could be done. So again, that just goes to show you that for hundreds, if not thousands of years, people were held back by the belief that the human body was incapable of performing at that level until one day it happened. Somebody broke through that barrier and that shattered the belief for the rest of the world. So maybe you're like me and you have no interest in running a sub four minute mile. That's Perfectly all right. I have no intentions of ever trying that. I do love endurance races and things like that, but a sub four minute mile is not anything that I want to accomplish. But the underlying concept of belief remains the same. And that's a really cool thing, guys, is that whatever you can set your mind to, if you can get yourself to truly believe it, then you have no limit or no end of things you can accomplish. And the hack for this is actually pretty simple and pretty cool. And that is to find a group. You know, don't go at it alone because you're going to get much more in terms of believing from a group setting than you will from an individual person trying to go at it on their own. So find somebody, even if it's just one person, find one person 
that has been where you're trying to go or that has done what you're trying to do and hang out with them, get in a group with them, spend time around them because that's going to feed your belief. The belief that you can do something, the belief that you are capable of achieving this because this person or this group of people did it. So again, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. And with, and with technology, you literally have the whole world at your fingertips. You quite literally have access to endless numbers of groups for endless numbers of things. So it doesn't have to be an in-person group. Don't let that stop you. Get out there, get on Facebook, get on Instagram, get on Twitter, whatever it is for you, get out there and find a group that has done what you're trying to do because the odds are they exist and all you need is one other person. So if you can't find a group anywhere, it just doesn't exist, then find a coach because a coach is ultimately going to be the one that's going to cheerlead you, the one that can push you, the one that can help and believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. So ultimately, guys, there's really no excuse because there is a ton of resources and you can get connected with any corner of the globe now thanks to the Internet. So that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Come back next week. We're going to get into habits, but I wanted to start with belief because belief is kind of the cornerstone. You can change habits, but you have to have belief for them to become permanent. So come back next Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you then. <laughs>